What is going on, fitness junkies? We got a good amount of people again this week. And thank you to Jesse, who's on here, um, who suggested this topic uh, of artificial sweeteners. And I'm surprised I haven't talked about this one yet. So we're going to go pretty deep into this one. I made a nice, pretty PowerPoint on here for you guys this week. Uh, thanks to Mark and David, who suggested the PowerPoint. Um, but yeah, so we'll go through here. I Like I was saying to my clients here on the call before, you know, there's so much information on artificial sweeteners and there's so much conflicting, like biased opinions on the topic. So I wanted to just like really distill it down to like the main points and the things that I found when doing a lot of, re a lot of research over the weekend on this stuff, kind of preparing for this, but I wanted to just kind of like distill it to the main points um, that you guys should know that I felt like, you know, kind of formed my opinion on it now uh, after looking more into the information um, and just, just kind of cut through the BS. You know, I have no reason to be biased towards pushing any sort of artificial sweeteners or diet stuff onto you guys. So it's really just, I'm going to give you the information and then I'm going to kind of tell you my opinion um, from that information that I've formed. And then, you know, you, you can be able to, to form your own opinion on the topic. Um, and really it is individual depending on your situation, but I'll give you kind of my recommendation for, for different situations. So Let's go ahead and dive into it. So artificial sweeteners, guys. So this is a good slide here. Um, these are kind of the main artificial sweeteners that are talked about a lot and that are in like most diet drinks and a lot of like sweeteners that you'll see when you're trying to, to use sweeteners to cook foods to make it more of a diet food. Um, so what we're talking about today with these non-nutritive sweeteners is, is what they're also called is aspartame, stevia, monk fruit, sucralose or Splenda, and ace sulfame K. Okay. And th these are kind of the most common ones. One thing I wanted to talk about, you'll see, I kind of noted natural on a couple of these. And that's because I think they're, whether it's natural or unnatural, I think there, there's too much of a stigma around that. Okay. So, you know, whether something is natural or not, that doesn't may, mean it's bad or not. I think when people say like, this is a chemical, you know, they, they're making it sound bad, but really like anything is a chemical. Like if you, if you pay attention to chemistry, like even natural things are, are a chemical, right? So whether it's natural or not, does not mean that it's good or bad. Okay. So I just wanted to, to kind of touch on that point, but these are the, the natural sweeteners. Okay. And these are more of the unnatural or synthetic sweeteners. Um, so you'll see too, that I noted, um, that how sweeter these are than sugar. And this point will make more sense on why I go into this on the next slide. But as you can see, like these are actually a lot sweeter than sugar. And that's why it helps to, to kind of, um, use these instead of sugar, because you're still getting that sweet effect. But aspartame, you can see is like 180, 200 times sweeter than sugar. Stevia, 250 to 300 times sweeter than sugar. Monk fruit, 200 times sweeter than sugar. Um, Splenda is way sweeter than sugar. Um, a sulfame K 200 times sweeter than sugar. So, um, and that'll make more sense when we talk about this. So, you know, why is sweetness without the calories bad? So obviously, you know, when you're, when you're using these artificial sweeteners, the whole benefit is to get less calories pretty much. And you're, you're trying to make it like a diet drink or diet food. Okay. So, when you're, when you're switching it out and you're now you have a, basically a zero calorie drink or food, um, why is the sweetness still bad? And what I came to the conclusion of when, when kind of looking into it is with these sweeteners, um, you still get an insulin spike. And so it still tells the body that it's ready to eat. Your pancreas still tells your body that um, we want it. It's, it's feeding time, basically, when you have that insulin spike. Okay, so this causes you to to want to eat and potentially increases your cravings because you're you're literally your body is is being told that it's time to eat because you have you're having that insulin spike even though there's no sugar from that sweetness okay so it can actually you know a lot of times people think that you're going to curb cravings with artificial sweeteners but it it can actually increase your cravings because of this okay so that that's one big point that i kind of looked at and you know, I think that's one of the main detriments to these artificial sweeteners is that, you know, even though you think you're, you're doing something to try to like curb cravings, it can actually in the long run, make you want to eat more. 
Okay. So that, that's a good thing to kind of just know and be aware of and take into account with this stuff. Um, so that's, that's why the sweetness can be a bad thing. Um, so just give me the numbers, right? So let's on this next one, this was kind of the best study or my favorite study that I saw. Um, I, I saw a few different studies, but this one just made it super simple for me. So I just wanted to show this one to you guys. So I just made a little graph here. Um, so basically there was this study and they split the subjects into four different groups. So they all followed the same diet. The only difference was one group drank a regular soda every day, a liter actually of regular soda every day. The other group drank diet soda, um, a liter of it every day. The other group drank a liter of milk every day. And the last group drank a liter of water every day. Okay. So everything was the same besides what they were drinking a liter of every single day. And the soda group gained 22 pounds on average. They gained 22 pounds on average through the study. Okay. The, the diet soda group gained um, six pounds or sorry, sorry, four pounds. Sorry about that. The diet soda group still gained a little bit of weight, but obviously significantly less than the regular soda group. Okay. But they still did gain weight. All right. On average, four pounds throughout the study. Okay. The milk group did not gain or lose anything. They stayed exactly the same. Okay. So the milk group stayed the same. The water group lost uh, four pounds. Okay. So soda group gained 22 pounds. Diet soda gained four pounds. Milk stayed the same. Water lost four pounds. Okay. So this was kind of the most eye opening study for me um, just because you can obviously see that switching from soda to diet soda, if you're someone that drinks a lot of soda, um, there's a huge benefit to that. Or switching from, you know, sugary things to a artificial sweetener alternative. Uh, there's a huge benefit to that. And you can just see it right there, like clear as day. Okay. And then, but you'll also see that there is a detriment. Um, if you're someone that does not drink diet soda at all, you know, there would be a detriment if you started drinking diet soda, like you, you, there is, you know, it shows that you, you can gain weight by doing so. Okay. So there's like an eight pound difference here as if you were just drinking water every day compared to, uh, if you were drinking diet soda. Okay. So I thought that was a pretty eye opening and, and clear study. Um, so one thing too, that uh, it's, it's still around all the time. This, this kind of like aspartame is going to cause cancer and everything like this. Usually you hear about aspartame, aspartame, but a lot of people say it about a lot of different artificial sweeteners. So do they cause cancer? And really what I'm, what I saw multiple times was most likely no. Okay. The, the studies were done on mice or rats at very high doses. Okay. So rats can't always be, you know, some studies, um, for, for whatever it may be, um, they, you can compare the results to humans. It can be comparable, but sometimes not. Okay. So it, it's better to have human trials with stuff like that. If you're going to say such a, um, a drastic claim, sorry about that. Oh man. <laughs> oh geez. Previous. Sorry about that guys. Um, so yeah. Um, so one thing like to, to take into consideration is that these studies were done on mice at high doses. And then, so really, I think the reason why this is still around is kind of the negativity bias. I think that's why, you know, this, this do these artificial sweeteners cause cancer? I think because when something is so drastic and it's like, man, that's a scary thing. Like something causes cancer that sticks in your brain. So even though that's kind of been busted, you know, and, and we've kind of shown like these studies aren't really comparable to human trials, you know, because it was such a drastic claim and it sticks in people's brain because that, you know, it's, it's probably going to stick around for a while, but most likely, you know, this stuff is, is safe and there, there hasn't, it hasn't been proven that it causes cancer in humans. Okay. So what my recommendations are to kind of just like, you know, with all this information, I really tried to distill it down to these main things that I saw a lot of times. Um, you know, so those were kind of the main points of information that I wanted to show you guys. So with my recommendation, you know, if you're someone who drinks a lot of soda and you have a big sweet tooth, um, then, then I would recommend you start replacing some of, some of those things with artificial sweeteners. There's definitely benefit to that. As you saw in the study, like, and 
when you switch from soda to diet soda, like there was a 22 pound um, compared to a four pound uh, gain there. So there's a like a an 18 pound difference in that. And that there's also been studies where people like just basically cut out soda completely and they lose like 50 pounds. Like, so if you're someone that does drink a lot of um, sugary drinks or you consume a lot of sugary foods, then replacing that stuff with artificial sweeteners will benefit you a lot. Okay. So if, if you don't struggle with that type of thing, or you're just not someone that consumes a lot of sugar, then I would not start like consuming artificial sweeteners. Like I would, I would avoid it if you can. Okay. So that that's kind of where my opinions actually changed. Um, and, and a lot of it from doing this presentation and kind of looking at more research, but also just like in the past couple of years, I just have wanted to avoid it because I have known some of this stuff. Um, so, you know, you, but seeing that you can gain weight, like it still does cause weight gain can cause cravings. So those are things to take into consideration. I wouldn't just start drinking them if you're not someone that drinks a lot of sugary stuff or eats a lot of sugary foods. Okay. But either way, like one to two a day, isn't bad. Like, like we saw in the, the, the mice thing, like they, they were giving those mice huge doses of aspartame. And that's why they were making those drastic claims. Cause those mice were getting cancer, but for one, they're rats. And, and also like, you know, if you're drinking one to two, um, diet sodas a day, or like having one or two pieces of food that has artificial sweeteners in it a day, like it's not nearly enough to, to have any sort of negative effects like that, but it could cause some cravings like we talked about. Okay. So those were kind of my recommendations and hope that just helped you guys like kind of weed through a lot of the BS that's out there. Cause one thing I wanted to say too, is like a lot of the videos and things I saw out there were made by like <laughs> people with supplement companies or, or even like people with companies that, that have products with artificial sweeteners. So there's obviously a bias there for people to push that type of thing. Um, and then you know, so sometimes it's good to have an unbiased perspective and just give you the information and let you kind of see the facts, um, kind of weed through the BS and let you form your own opinion on it. Um, so that that's my recommendation. And as you see, like with with what situation situation you're in, it could depend on what you decide to do. Um, but I hope that's helpful for you guys. OK, so that's it. Um, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any extra questions. I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions for my clients that are on the call right now. Uh, but I hope that was helpful for you. Um, like I said, let me know if you have extra questions on that, but um, have a great week. Let me know if you guys have other topic ideas that you want to know more about. And, uh, and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace.